Hello, Calculus students and seekers of general truths. In this vid video, in the several videos that come after this, we will explore uh, error bounds of infinite series. And so let's review the big questions that concern infinite series and polynomials. First is, how do we make a series to approximate a function? And we've already talked quite a bit at length about some of the tools that are avail to, uh, available to us. There are the power series, and there's the special case of that, Taylor series, and then there's the special case of that, the McLaren series. And the next big question is, does, once we make a series, does that series converge to anything? If there is some convergence, then we can use it to estimate or approximate the functions. If it doesn't converge, then it's really not very helpful to us. And we have a variety of tests, the nth term test, the ratio over the root, the direct and the limit comparison test, the integral, and a few others that we've learned. So that's what we've addressed so far. Look back at the other lessons if you're not clear on these, these two, first two big questions. And the last question, which is we're going to focus on today, is how close is the approximation? And, and is it ever possible to have a series that gives us an exact answer to a particular function? Well, let's see what we have available at our disposal so far. So one thing we've learned already is something called the alternating series error bound. Um, and to summarize, it says we can capture it in this expression here. Given an infinite series, so that's this expression here, a sub n, n between 0 and infinity, the difference between the infinite series and a partial sum, so let's say you're going to go, you're going to add up the first k terms, so k could be any finite value. The difference between the infinite series and the, and the kth partial sum is no more than the next term that's excluded in the series, so in, in the partial sum. So if, you're, if you look at, if you add up the first four numbers, the difference between those four numbers and the infinite series would be no more than the fifth number in the, the series. Of course, that we have to caveat that, that the series must alternate, right? hence the name alternating series, error bound, and then it must converge. Okay? And again, um, look at the links for a proof or at least an explanation of uh, more detail in the, series error, in the alternating series error bound. For now, we're going to proceed, and I'm going to show you how we can use the er alternating series error bound to uh, answer this third big question here. How close is the approximation? Okay. Well, let's look at an example. Use the first four terms of the McLaren series for cosine to estimate cosine of 0 0.5. How close is the estimate to the exact answer? Um, a quick review, quick review, this is the McLaren series for cosine. Cosine, remember, is an even function, so we're looking at all of the even powers. It is going to be alternating, and we have demonstrated um, look at the links in the previous videos that this series converges. Okay, so we're using the first four terms here, the first four terms. So this is going to be 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial. And I simply substitute in 1 half for 0 0.5. And then I work out all of the details. Um, 2 factorial is 2, 4 factorial is 24, 6 factorial is 720, and I get this big fraction, 40,439 over 46,080. And that, as a decimal, is this decimal with some repeating sevens at the end. Okay, so uh, big picture, what this means is that if we, the exact answer for the cosine of 0.5, we don't know right now, but we can estimate it using this four-term polynomial. And notice I said four terms, not fourth degree. This is four terms, okay, um, of, the co of the McLaren series for cosine. Plug in this value, I get this estimate. And again, the question that we're, we're addressing here is really the second one. How close is this estimate to the exact answer? Right? How close is the estimate to the exact answer? Well, remember, um, if I keep expanding the cosine polynomial, the, the McLaren polynomial, the next term that I, that's in there is going to be x to the 8th over 8 factorial. Okay? So let's use what we learned, what we um, established before 
the alternating series error bound. So this is the infinite series. The infinite series is supposed to give us the exact answer for cosine. Right? Uh, this is the fourth partial sum. This is what we calculated on the last slide. And the difference between those two should be no more than the next term excluded. So the next term that was excluded here was x to the eighth over 8 factorial. And all I've done here is substituted 0.5 in for that. And I worked out this arithmetic, and I, got, and I simplified it, and I got 1 over 10,321,920. Okay. And at this point, we, I should pause and, and emphasize just how, how great this is, right? We don't know the exact answer to cosine of 0 0.5. We produce a four-term polynomial, which is a relatively small polynomial, just got four terms. And based on those four terms, and what we know about the alternating series error bound, we are within 10 to the negative seventh of the exact answer. Right? So we are within like one ten millionth of the exact answer, which is a, which is a spectacular result. Right? And again, and just a quick reminder, right? if we want to get more accurate, well, all we have to do is do more work. If you want to get a even greater precision than 10 to the negative 7, use, uh, expand your series to your polynomial to five terms, and then calculate the error, calculate the value, calculate the area of that, and you'll get an even better error estimate. Okay. So just from the alternating series error bound, we uh, have the ability uh, to quickly calculate, relatively quickly calculate an estimation and also put a limit on how big that that error could possibly be. But remember our two caveats back here. All right? Our caveats are that you have to use an alternating series and you have to know for sure that it converges. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here and we'll start another one where we look at another approach for approximating error. And then we'll kind of con compare and contrast the, the two methods, and we'll do some examples with both. As always, thank you for working hard. Keep working hard and keep struggling. Um, it, it, this material can be difficult at times, but when you're learning something new, that is uh, a normal experience. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.